Okay, let's do some industrial archaeology. Uh, this is a PDP-11 uh, mini computer circuit board. So uh, before there were microcomputers, there was minis. Uh, and this is a, was a pretty iconic uh, processor line. Uh, on this uh, assembly are two identical looking chips. Uh, they are uh, serial ports, uh, UARTs. And uh, if I just zoom into one of them, uh, you can see that it's made by a company called uh, General Instruments, a uh, long since gone company. I'm not sure who owns their assets now. Um, it's uh, marked AY51013A, and uh, this one was built in 1980, uh, but as we're going to quickly find out, the uh, design provenance is uh, quite a bit uh, um, earlier than that. Let's uh, take the package off, and then we uh, get the actual uh, whole die photograph, and uh, a very typical of a medium-scale integrated part. Uh, this one uh, is uh, 50 years old, so um, obviously we got the bond wires are coming out on the edges, and uh, a sort of a, a center part here, which of course holds all the logic. Let's uh, zoom into the uh, mark on the chip, uh, General Instruments, GI of course. And there's that uh, marking, uh, 1971, uh, which of course puts it uh, just a little bit under 50 years old. So uh, this is an old chip indeed. Uh, if we uh, take a look at one of the I.O. pads, and actually, pardon me, these are two I.O. pads. Uh, let's see if I can just uh, get uh, them highlighted. Uh, this one here still has the bond uh, pad, this little black dot is basically gold. Uh, on this one here it's nicely and cleanly separated and uh, you can see a typical uh, uh, a structure. Uh, let me just go to a schematic here so we can sort down one and the other. So the top basically are, are ESD protection diodes or clamping diodes. Uh, they prevent, if you have an over voltage in CMOS, you don't want to called latch up. Um, you can sort of see this uh, serpentining going on. and It's very, very common uh, in uh, CMOS circuitry design. Uh, and what's going on is basically we have uh, two diodes, uh, one on this side here and one on this side here. And the reason for the serpentine is basically the diode function only really exists at the uh, the periphery. And uh, so by having a, sort of lengthening the line and essentially you can create a, a diode which has higher current carrying capacity. Coming down the out pad in this particular case connects on a top metal and it goes to this structure here. And uh, same thing's going on here, but we have now we have a slightly more complicated structure of uh, a couple of transistors, uh, one on the top here, one on the bottom. And what this is is actually an output pad. So this is a driver transistor, and that's why it's quite large. And it basically allows you to drive a signal out uh, into uh, the edge of the uh, uh, silicon die, then of course onto the package, and eventually you can solder that pin onto something. Let's uh, take a look at the block diagram. The nice thing about uh, integrated circuits of this era is they actually have... Um, fairly extensive block diagrams. Uh, it's basically separated into two functions, receiver chip and a transmitter chip. Uh, the receiver, uh, the data cores here, you can see going outwards, that means it gets driven into the processor section, because that's uh, receive. Uh, you have uh, basically a register here, uh, so that's going to be 8 bits long, because it's an 8-bit data bus. And there's going to be a shift register here, same thing, basically 8 bits long. So Data comes in, uh, then there's some logic basically to check uh, the start. Uh, it's a serial protocol. Um, you might know it as RS-232 or the serial port and uh, older personal computers. Uh, basically, the, there's a protocol which has a parity checking and then the start bit, and there's a timing generator down here. But basically, all this logic then, it just uh, shifts the 8 bits into here. They're moved across into a register here. A doorbell's rung essentially saying to the processor that uh, the data is readable. And uh, then it's uh, it's held here, and the processor has to read it out. So there's no depth here, only one byte. So the processor has to be relatively fast, and then, of course, you can read it. On the transmit side, we have, you know, it's the exact same thing, but uh, instead of the data going outwards, it's driven inwards by the processor. Uh, then it's held into a register, and then it's uh, shifted to a, a transmit register, so it can start shifting outwards. And then as it's sh being shifted outwards, oops, I think I got that backwards, and it goes this way. As it, as it gets shifted outwards into uh, the connection on the uh, serial port, uh, basically the processor then can refill this buffer here and fiddle it up. Same thing, of course, uh, it has to do it you know, quite relatively quickly. Now, in this era, these chips, uh, the maximum baud rate was 30 kilobaud, and traditionally with a V252 terminal, which would be very commonly mated to a... Uh, uh, PDP-11 computer, uh, you don't, of course, have it. You'll, you have microseconds in which to shift data out. So it was quite plausible to time shift it that way. So here we have the uh, die photograph with the receiver on the bottom and the uh, transmitter on top. Uh, confusingly, the transmit transistors are on the receiver because that's just the terminology. Uh, basically, what you see here, of course, is the data bus transceivers. 
and they're all going off to their associated uh, their associated pads. And then above here, you got the receiver. Uh, and of course, now we can actually sort down uh, a bit of logic. Uh, for example, here, this should be about a flop's worth of logic in terms of a, um, this is like the 8-bit buffer here. It looks like there's about 8 of these plus some for parity and status bits. Um, and then up here would be the shift register. Uh, much the same on the top here. Let me just zoom into the uh, a typical flop. Now you can see actually this is um, very typical. It looks like it's hand laid out because it is. Everything's kind of handcrafted here, all sort of, you know, done very specially. Um, the era of having computers lay out gates that lay, uh, ooh, probably at least a decade in the future here from this chip design. Uh, by this time, of course, you can see it's nice and regular, so all this was probably computerized in terms of its placement. Uh, it was probably done in uh, vellum, and then actually uh, the cords were snapped by uh, a, a computer-aided design system, which then produced the actual final artwork film. Uh, that's why everything's nice and straight. If you go back to years earlier, you can start seeing real curvy lines, but um, by this year, I think we probably have a little bit of CAD going on. Anyways, a little bit of an interesting archaeology. If you'd like to take a better look at these photographs, I have them on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com.